Hi, I'm James Wilkinson, and I've been a travel editor for over 20 years. On this show, we're going to take you to some of the world's most amazing destinations, from the big cities to the great regional areas. We'll go inside some of the world's best hotels, bars, restaurants, galleries, and much more. Right now, we're in Singapore, and this is Wayfair. Singapore is known for its fantastic bars and restaurants, shopping, hotels, attractions, and for being one of the financial powerhouses of Asia. It's great for a couple of days or a week-long escape. Let's go exploring. The Raffles Hotel here in Singapore truly is one of the world's most iconic hotels. It dates back to 1887, and quite recently it just had a major makeover that's seen some new restaurants added some bars reimagined and some rooms luxuriously refreshed. Let's go inside and take a look. Raffles Singapore first opened its doors over 130 years ago. And in that time, it's become a national monument and a treasure for Singaporeans. And now it's never looked better. The hotel reopened in August 2019 after a careful and sensitive three-phase restoration which began in February 2017, and it's firmly seen a legend reborn. The revitalized Raffles Singapore features its famed butler service, alongside 115 suites across nine categories, including some exceptional residential suites. There's also an all new Raffles shopping arcade loaded up with some bespoke brands, as well as a luxurious day spa the hotel's always been well known for. Here you'll also find an amazing array of restaurants and cocktail dens, including a reimagining of the legendary Long Bar, famous for the Singapore Sling. Well, Raffles in Singapore is home to one of the newest Alain Ducasse restaurants in the world called BBR. Come on, let's check it out. Now to find out about the amazing food on offer here at BBR, let's go and catch up with the chef de cuisine, Louis Paculan. Well, Chef, thanks so much for your time. We're here at BBR by Alain Ducasse. Tell us about the concept here in the restaurant. So here we have a Latin Mediterranean concept. It's only about Italy, Spain, France and Portugal. We try to do a sharing food concept so nobody comes in the restaurant with friends to have his own dish. We put everything on the table, sharing is caring, so we really take care of that to the clients to have this experience. We explained this at the beginning of the meal. You have some tapas, you have some big piece of meat, some big piece of fish. So we, we try, our waiter are doing a great job on this to explain well the dish for the clients. The other concept is a, an amazing open kitchen, uh, a restaurant which is between the past and the future. Uh, the design has been made respecting the, the floor, respecting all the whole building and bringing in, in the middle of this building a beautiful kitchen. Now I can smell some amazing food here. You've obviously got a lot of great seafood on the menu. I can smell that right now. Where's the seafood coming from? So all our fishes are from Japan. We have amazing uh, Ikejime, Sibrim, uh, mackerel from Japan, which are excellent. And all the clams, the, uh, the scallops, the mussels are from France. The octopus is from Spain, so we really take care to source the good products at the good place. And you've got quite a few Ducasse restaurants around the world now. What makes this one a bit more interesting than the other one? Uh, I think it's the open kitchen. It's really like my chefs are really talking to the clients. Everybody is involved to the service. Uh, my, my cooks, when uh, someone, uh, there is uh, no, no, no one at the pass, they will bring directly to the clients the, the dishes, they will explain at the counter. It's really, really important to have a direct contact with the clients for my chefs. People probably sit at the bar over here watching what you're cooking and probably want to change their order halfway through because they're watching you cook something else. Exactly. You know, when we do the clams, uh, we open the clams in front of the client so you have this smell. And when we do it at the counter, 
you, you can be sure that all the counter is going to take at least one clams to share to taste it because the smell is just amazing. And how important is the wine matching then with the great food? Obviously you produce amazing food, but how important is that wine match as well? So the, the wine, uh, Gérard Marjon, our chef sommelier for Ola Landucas uh, restaurant, which is with chef since the beginning, make, ma tailor made the menu here to have all the wine from all the different countries we decided to serve. And uh, he, every time we change the menu here, he changes menu to adapt at his best. The, the wine list yeah, that we are making. We still have some classic from Burgundy, of course, and some Bordeaux, but we really try to focus on new, small vineyards uh, from, from Spain, from Italy, from south of France. So to a large degree, you're also coming up with dishes that actually are matching the wine as well. So how often are you changing your menu here? Uh, we try to change every two or three months, but we have lots of specials coming every day, and one or two specials. So our clients, when they come once, they are not bored after two or three times. Fantastic. Well, Chef, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to trying the food. So, yeah, of course. Come, please. Cheers. Thank, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. One of the hottest new restaurants here in Singapore is called Cloud Street. And right now, we're going to show you what it's all about. Well, Chef, we're here at Singapore's hottest new restaurant, Cloud Street. Tell us a bit about the concept here. So, after we decided to close Chick by Jal and turn it into a bistro, uh, so Gareth from Melbourne moved here as well to do it with, this, uh, with me. And it, we just wanted to create an experience that you couldn't get anywhere else. Mainly the dining, it's, it's around the counter. Yeah. We have 14 seats and we have a couple of tables as well. And also a beautiful private dining room. And when it comes to food, it's still the idea of what it is. It's pretty much what we used to do at Cheek by Zal, but we evaluated everything and it's a way better experience. And we're here in a, a 36 seat restaurant that could easily be 50 or 60. Why have you gone for a, that kind of experience? It's, it's unlike anything I've seen in Singapore before. I think one thing in Singapore is space. It's very limited and space is very expensive. But we just wanted to create a better experience, give people space to breathe, especially you know you come here for dinner after your long day of work and we always in these tiny spaces so yeah. I just even the kitchen like you can have a look after it's 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 a very spacey place to work. You're really bringing some of your Sri Lankan heritage now into some of the dishes here on the menu. Yes there's there's a couple of things as a snack uh, oysters from Coffin Bay but we wrap them in beetle leaf and cook over bin chatan. It's a dressing made out of coconut milk and uh, finger lime. Wonderful. And also there's a baby jackfruit curry with our main course yeah. at the moment. Well everyone talks a lot about the curries in Singapore so it's, a, it's one of those things I guess when you, you can really twist it and turn it on on your own influence on it right? So. Yeah because like, it's we're very familiar with especially Indian food is very big in Singapore and yeah. there's not many Sri Lankan restaurants so it's nice for me to being able to bring some yeah. of those elements here. And you've got one of the best looking restaurants in Singapore very quickly. How did you pull this together? This is an amazing looking restaurant. I don't think I'll ever do that again because we did the nine weeks before we did our first service. This space was an empty office and it's one place that, that's why Singapore, when it comes to logistics and getting things done, it's fast. If you have the commitment and the time, yeah. it's an amazing place to do that. And yeah, nine weeks, you know, we got our furniture from Bali and some things actually we upcycled a lot like the table in the private dining room the shelving it's real antiques so and we physically did a lot of work here and our designer like from uh, Grey Matters and Elisa like she physically did a lot of work here yeah and it's quite different for the area there's a lot of a lot more restaurants and bars that have popped up around this part of Singapore now so this is very different to anything in the area it's but you also when you went in with Cheek You've also helped grow this area from a restaurant standpoint. I think, yeah, like when we first moved to this area, like four years ago, some people thought actually it wouldn't work because the previous restaurant before Cheek didn't work and there yeah. was a couple of restaurants who were struggling a little bit. But now looking back, the like amount of restaurants, it, it's changed, the demographic has changed. And also what we do here, it's not the cheapest menu around, especially for lunch. Yeah. And Sometimes rather than giving what market wants, creating that market, 
has a bigger impact. Yeah, and I think that's a very important thing, isn't it? Because there is a sort of there is a, a lunchtime crowd that, that does get a lot of restaurants in Singapore, whether it's client lunches or what have you. So it, having a menu like that is something quite different for lunch in Singapore. Yeah, and yeah, like business lunches are big, and there's only a couple of restaurants around this area that you could have that experience, and it works for us. Yeah. And I'm glad we went that way. Awesome. Well, look forward to coming and trying the food, Chef. Can't wait to have you here. Thanks, man. No worries. Singapore is also well known for its cocktail bar scene, with several in the city up there with the world's best. Let's have a drink now at a couple of our favourites. A short walk down Amoy Street and up some stairs you'll find yourself at Native, truly one of the world's most unique bars. Winner of the world's most sustainable bar award, here you'll see the philosophy of celebrating provenance in not just a cocktail program, but in everything they do. In fact, Native's got a zero waste drinks program, so it's a case of sustainability at its finest. All spirits, ingredients, and even the music comes from Asia, so it's also one of the world's most hyper-locally sourced bars. Their hospitality is also world-class, so make sure to take a seat at the bar and let them lead the show. Hidden away from the much-loved watering holes up the hill of the ever-bustling Club Street, you'll find the cosy, comfortable and very much exciting bistro-come-fine-dining spot, Le Bon Funk. Chef-owner Kieran Buck has created a warm environment that's renowned for its boutique natural winelets, as much as it is his mastery of fermentation and cooking. You can drop by for a few small bites and glasses at the high tables, or reserve a spot for a full meal in the middle of the action. Coming up on the next episode of Wayfarer, We create and put it all together. And that's for cooking, the important thing is the flavour and the balancing. There you go to enjoy Mr. 42 Fetra. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs>